hey guys I wanted to give you guys a um, sort of tutorial or sort of infomercial about the different parts of an RSPS code base um, sort of like how these frameworks work across all revisions so this is kind of like um, 317 through I guess infinity right you know whichever uh, version revision of RuneScape so um, these are all of um, the types of things that could be um, in a um, framework so let's start off with objects objects are things that are um, like rocks let's look let's look it up um, objects runescape so anything that is like this tree you see that tree right there like let's look at this picture this tree is an object that opening is an object this tree that rock is an object but all of this grass here is not an object right each of these is a player each of these is an NPC and each of these different parts of um, the code base these assets of the game each of them are distinct in their own and they're referred to differently in the uh, code so if you look at the code you'll have something like uh, like some kind of object um, class so in this source in a 727 source called darken you'll see it's called game object and something like 2009 scape it'll be something like world object or object in a 317 base it'll be a little bit different every single source is different but it's the same concept and inside of each object you're going to have um, different let me see if I can uh, control f5 I believe see there we go inside each object you're going to have like a different type of uh, structure you're gonna have like these different um, functions and you're also going to have different like properties and stuff so if you go to world object let's see if I can do that again yeah world object here we go so we have more uh, parts of the world object and that's that's really all it is it's just something that's in the world okay and these objects can have animations attached to them as well as other data then you have NPCs and players so NPCs are a different class than players and they both share like different uh, class things with them now give me one moment to see what's going on here um, okay I see what's going on okay now let me show you player one moment where's player model entity player okay so this player will have all of these functions and the bigger the code source the more functions it's going to have and each of these functions will add sort of like a uh, ability for you as a programmer to do more things so uh, there will also be properties like these will be properties let's see if I could find any I guess it'll be at the top um, these would be the properties that are in it okay and uh, they define the things that a player um, saves right but with an NPC let's see if I could find an NPC here uh, NPC it's gonna be a little different it's gonna be in a, not an entirely different um, set of functions but it's just gonna be the things that apply to an NPC however both an NPC and a player are entities okay so what this means is that they share the same um, functions um, across this data type okay and these are everything it's big look at how small this little bar is it's big these are all the things that are shared between uh, NPC and player and they make 
uh, these two sort of the same in different ways. For example, the player will contain a world tile which it is on. The NPC will, will contain a world tile which it is on. It'll also contain like a skeleton that the animation runs on. And what you'll find out later is that every animation has a skeleton. So that's why if you use one animation on a player, but you use it on a troll, the troll like explodes and goes everywhere and it's just crazy. That's because you have to have the skeleton the same as the player or the troll skeleton the same as whatever you're playing in the player. So what that means is uh, you have to look at the data behind the animation class in the cache and see the skeleton. So, um, And those are the differences between a player and a NPC and the game objects. Let's go to the next one. Um, oh, graphics. So, uh, graphics can run on any world tile, okay? Any world tile. And uh, you can also call them as a projectile. And what that is, is like, uh, let me see if it has, you see this right here, this arrow? So that arrow would be considered a graphic but it's also a projectile. So what a projectile is, is it's a moving graphic. So you have something like a graphics class. It looks just like this, right? Well, it it's, it's its own thing and you just call it like new animation or new graphic and it's like a class that calls like a uh, packet. All you have to know for now is the concept. Okay, when you, when you code it later, you'll see it. But for now, just know that a graphic is anything that is um, on the world tile, and it looks like something, but it has no properties like a player or an NPC or an object. It's its own thing. And when you put a graphic on a player, for instance, it'll be attached to the direction of the player so whenever you um, turn the player around it'll move with it so whenever you see these trailing things like with the auras when you turn it on it's just a graphic and when the player turns the graphic turns with it however you can activate a graphic on a tile like right here and this this little shining light if i were to, to say turn on this graphic right here it would turn on Okay, but it wouldn't turn because it's not attached to an NPC or to a player, if that makes sense. So that's why um, when this player turns, this arrow moves, right? But once it turns into a projectile and it goes off, then it turns into like a projectile graphic. It's no longer attached to the player. So that's why when it's in the air and the player turns afterward, it will um, suddenly no longer turn with the player. So that's all you need to know is that a graphic can be attached to a world tile, a player, or an NPC. Okay? And that when it's attached to a player or NPC it turns with it. Right? And whenever there is a projectile with a graphic it's independent and moving. Okay? And any graphic like let me show you um, let's go to developer information, graphics list. So all of these would be the graphic ID. You could play this graphic and turn it into a projectile by calling like a projectile class. Okay. And I would show it to you, but I don't think I could find one quickly. Uh, it looks something like this, like, you know, send projectile, um, and it's totally like this world dot send projectile and here's the graphic ID so this is 2260 so if we were to look up um, 2260 we would see that this is a white mushroom for wrath and I think what that is is the wrath prayer as a white mushroom and you're going from this NPC to this world tile and the graphic is going to start at this height and at this time and it's going to send the projectile right and that's just the way it works okay so next one uh items so that's just basic item on the ground um and that's it 
so these items can be spawned and that's it right um, interfaces so this is very simple it's just one of um, these like this right here is an interface and there are like layers or parts of an interface so each of these right here would be considered a component okay like this little box and this little box maybe even this little chest would be considered a component and you can like send an item to each of these and you'd have to learn the um, framework each framework has a different way of doing it so basically what I'm trying to teach you here is the basic ideas across all frameworks of all RSPSs so when you learn this once you can learn this across other different ones and I'm giving you a high level overview so this is an interface it's called by a number so let me see if I can um, show you guys what it looks like on a random um, one like a random framework uh, send interface so this is what it looks like you basically have like a some kind of um, packet sender right this all this is doing is sending a packet to this client this player and the client puts up the interface 17 okay and you can look up like a um, go on rune server and look up a picture version of the interface for your revision so I don't know give me one moment if I can find it learning here I'll show you learning programming um, Java uh, projects um, RuneScape additional tools let's see if I have it um, interface dump so get one of these for your revision this is a 728 and basically let's go back this is send interface 17 so let's go to this interface 17 and we can see that that one is um, the uh, gravestone so this is when you check what is going to be kept on death so now I can tell you that this is open items kept on death right and that's it this is the way it would look like on any framework but it would look different okay because every framework is different but it's, it's a general idea this is this interface is a number this right here is a component and um, each component is a different type like this is a button type component this is a text type component this is a text type component this is a text type component you would have like an item face type component and you would have like an image type of component things like that okay so animations they apply to objects NPCs and players so basically it would be something like um, let me see if I can find one send animation send let's see if I could do new animation here it is so with this one it would be something like player dot set next animation new animation so you get this animation from the animation class just like the graphics class in darken um, this is just like any other framework and you have an ID set up to an animation and you play it so for example just like this um, interface dump or you could see each interface I recommend going to a let's look it up player emote here it is so for the revision that I'm in this would be the list that I would use so each of these would be a animation that is documented and uh, remember each animation has a skeleton but this this one is only for players so I think animation 1 has a different skeleton but animation 3, 5, 13, 15, 37, 38 each of these has a player skeleton so let me show you um, let's see if I could find the skeleton numbers um, I'm just giving you an overview of all of the uh, I think the, the different animation types and things like that so this right here 746 in the um, revision that I'm on is considered the humanoid or the player skeleton 
but you can see something like the White Knight has a 406 um, skeleton. Sheeps, which is like a really unique skeleton, is 5334. Chicken is 1268. Okay. And um, like dragons, here we go. Some dragons are different than other dragons, like King Black Dragon has three heads, so that makes it 21. Um, Frost Dragon is 13151. These regular dragons are 4972. So that's why you need to be aware of the different skeletons whenever you're playing animations. So next up, world tiles and coordinates. That's just any space of the world. World tiles in most matrix revisions. Uh, objects, NPCs, players, and items, I believe. All four of these inherit from world tile. In Darken, they do not but in most matrix revisions they do so all of the uh, functions and properties that are in world tiles are in these four so something like that i think this one would be a ground type item right so projectile uh, all that is is a moving graphic so and uh, that when the graphic is unattached from the player um it is deleted and then afterwards uh, the developer tells a projectile to appear from the player world tile as a graphic. And that's it. That's that's all the parts of a framework. And basically what you're doing is putting all of these together and orchestrating a RuneScape private server. 